From Studio A in Texas, USA, it's the All Things Automotive Car Talk Show in real time. Just ahead, we talk to Texas Asphalt Racing Series boss and promoter Gina Shile Knowles about the job of putting together an event. I thought that that would be an interesting topic. Yep. So how do you do it? How does it all come together? And I think that we're going to drill down with her and figure out exactly how it all comes together. We're also going to take you into our new car showroom this hour and give you a tour of the Nissan Versa. Later on, a peek inside the mystery garage. Also, the stories making automotive news headlines this week. All just ahead on the August 29th edition of the In Wheel Time Car Show. Boy, well, I'll be glad when August is over with. Slim Pickens was That's the it. That's what it was. <laughs> Slim is that, is that George? No. Uh, oh, you came up with it. Oh. No, I didn't come up with it. Mike Mars came up with it, so it must be your son. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Mike. Yeah. Slim <laughs> Pickens. What a, uh, what a great name, though. Well, it is. And what a great actor. Yeehaw. That's some good stuff there. Okay, so I thought that what we would do is I've got a feature that I, I wanted to uh, bring up at this hour and talk about recalls. Oh, my God. Because, you know, oh, back, yeah, yeah. Back, in, back in, well... Back in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, oh, my God, they've had a major recall on my car. And it's made major headlines in all the national news, front page of the newspaper, blah, 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 blah. Well, I want you to know that the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration issues recalls every week. Oh, yeah, yeah, easily. And just to give you some idea as to what some of these recalls are, I, I thought, the, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print this out and I'm going to show you. The importance of some of them and the, oh, my gosh, what are they doing of so some of them? This, this just happens to be a, is it four pages? Yeah, four pages. Four pages of recalls. Okay? This week. So I'm just going to run through these real quick. Thought it would be fun. Triumph Motorcycles, uh, a reflex reflector may detach. Uh, Nova bus, loss of drive from fractured pressure switch. That could be bad. New Flyer America. These are manufacturers now. New Flyer America, loss of drive from fractured pressure switch. Apparently, they bought from the same pressure switch company. American Hauler, potential axle spindle weld failure. That could be ugly. Uh, Daimler Trucks North America, engine harness may contact and chafe. Ford Motor Company, power supply cable incorrectly attached to starter. On a Ford F-150. Sounds like a thermal event to me. <laughs> thermal event. Yeah, thermal event. Uh, Ford Motor Company. Front brake hoses could rupture yeah, I, on the Ford Edge 2015 to 2018 yeah, or the Lincoln one. MKX 2016 to 2018. Another Ford recall. Rear coil springs may fracture on the Lincoln Corsair. This just gives you an idea. So the list goes on and on from all these different manufacturers. So if you get a recall... Okay, not necessarily good that you got a recall, meaning there, there's some sort of an issue. A defect in material or workmanship. But you have to understand, car manufacturers, they design and they assemble cars. They make, ver most of them, make very little of the components. It's all vendor supplied. Correct. And the manufacturer specs what the vendor has to build. And even in the recall world, some recalls are self uh Created that the manufacturer tells NHTSA, hey, our failure rate of this component is reaching uh, a level and we need to go ahead and recall it. Others, NHTSA issues the recall because they've had 6,000 phone calls that this vehicle has had this type of a problem and then they begin their investigation into it. So the recalls kind of come from multiple directions um, as well as some of the recalls are created by NHTSA just testing vehicles in a certain manner and see a repeated failure of it. But the, the one I always find interesting is the manufacturer initiated recalls because they found a fault or a defect in their vehicle and they jump out to get it recalled. You know another one that I didn't mention in that list that I went through there? Tire recalls. Man, there are a ton of tire recalls. Different manufacturers, some of them you may never have heard of before, and they may be private label type stuff that you would go down to the gas station and they would give you a couple of tires, you know, for a decent price, whatever the case may be. Uh, some of them are major manufacturers, Goodyear, Firestone, Bridgestone, Toyo, Nitto, all of those. They all, at time to time, will have a recall. Mm -hmm. So it's not unusual, and if you get a recall notification in the mail or you find a recall notification online safercars.gov check your vehicle often and speaking of that 
NHTSA has launched a mobile app that automatically checks for safety recalls and alerts users when a recall has been issued. The agency's Safer Car app, which they just came out with, allows users to type in or scan their VIN number and receive recall notifications on their Apple or Android device. Users can save information for their vehicles, car seats, tires, other equipment in a virtual garage on their devices to get critical safety information and access other NHTSA online tools. If a recall is issued, the app directs the user to a local dealership that is handling the repairs. Because here's the other thing. Most dealerships, and especially in Houston, most dealerships can handle all of the recalls Correct. for their particular Correct. brand. But there are dealerships, smaller dealerships, usually in the outlying areas, mm -hmm. that either they don't get the parts or they don't have the mechanic that is qualified to install the parts. Or they don't have the equipment to install or the, the part, equipment. You know, and, and, and sometimes the recall is issued before the part to fix it is produced. And that's not uncommon at all. Right. You got to wait on parts. Right. Um, the total number of vehicles, car seats, tires, and equipment recalled in 2019 was about 53 million. Oh, my gosh. According to the agency, with vehicles making up 38.6 million or nearly 73% of those items recalled. <coughs> to Act on it. You know, the, the thing with this app, if you don't think getting a phone call from a robocall trying to sell you solar for the roof of your house isn't <laughs> annoying, wait till NHTSA starts telling you you're on your 14th or 15th recall for your vehicle. Well, and, you know, and this and, is the 12th time we've told you that. Yeah, That's right. Really. And, and we were talking about this earlier about Takata, the Takata airbag thing. Well, do you realize that there are still 20 million Takata airbags out there? That have not been replaced. And and some that have been replaced have since been recalled. Twice or three times. And recalled times. and recalled because the original part, like we just talked about, sometimes right. the, the correct part isn't available. The or, early part of the Takata re air recall was they just put a new Takata bag in it that had the same problem the old one did. It just didn't have time for the corrosion. To, right. And, and like you were talking about, the, the, the smaller outlying areas, we've got my... Mother's van, we had the airbags. They had three recalls on it. This well, is a Honda, right? There's two Honda dealers down there. There's one in Port Arthur, and then there's one over in Beaumont. And that's it. You don't, you know, you don't have any choices except right. to come to Houston, 100 miles away. So, so you go there, you make the appointment, and you wait on parts. Well, on the airbag, the Takata airbag, those airbags come in with a VIN specific. Um, package and you know because we call on a lot of uh, Honda stores with BG and literally they would unload pallets of airbags into their parts department and each box with that airbag in it had that customer serial number on it and that part had to go on that vehicle so it's a little bit more complicated was it, was it because of the way it was designed or just for an inventory tracking purposes well some of it was inventory tracking but some of it was color and content you know if you're replacing a steering wheel airbag you know you've got to have the right color of the cover, of cover. the cover, yeah. and in some instances, the cover was different from an LS to an LT or whatever the right. the trim level is. So it, it could be relatively complicated for them to do that. But I remember when I was working for Oldsmobile back in '85, I actually was heavily involved in initiating a recall. The Oldsmobile Calais, and we were just starting to get them in. You remember the Calais? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were really popular. Just starting to get them in, and I had looked at my third one where the hood had whacked the windshield and the secondary hood latch was improperly made. So I'm filing these reports and calling people and letting them know, taking pictures. And there was a couple other guys around the country that were doing the same thing. So that was one of the factory initiatives because they ended up having to recall that relatively quick and totally changed the way the, the secondary hood latch worked on it. But there's people out there from the manufacturers, from NHTSA, from independent organizations that are looking at failure rates of vehicles to determine is this recallable it's very expensive as well you know you got to yeah. think of how many I mean, billions it, of dollars they're spending on takata and then there was one of them though i can't remember i want to say it, it was one of the fca products but the the sticker a paper sticker 
on the one of the minivans. Might have had something misspelled. Yeah, they had, and it was a recall. Oh yeah, to replace this little sticker. And right. It took all of thirty seconds to do. Oh, it. I, I remember they had. Uh, you know, all of the cars have the door sticker that tell you the tire pressures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they had uh, a tire pressure that was off by like three pounds, and they recalled you know three hundred thousand vehicles because that just to replace that sticker for the tire pressure being wrong. Um. I uh, ran across a story. I don't want you to look. Don't look over my shoulder. Don't, don't read cheat. ahead. Don't read ahead. Oh, I want to sniff your hair. <laughs> <laughs> we could call you Joe. Did he actually just say that? <laughs> yes, he did. I washed it and it smells really good. <laughs> Thank you. I know. It smells like cocoa butter. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's not cocoa butter. <laughs> 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 Jeff Sony's Zika just Jeff. said that's not cocoa butter. <laughs> oh, God. Once well, again, now lost control. <laughs> once again, the train has left the tracks. Um, so Fell off them. <laughs> so, what would you think? I'll take a survey here. Jeff Zekin over there running the cameras, and Mr. Mars and, and and Conrad. What would you think is one of the biggest hits with consumers on vehicle technology these days? What do you think is Probably the biggest hit. Biggest. I, I would say the um, uh, internet connectivity. Mars? I would think the, the user interface, the, the buttons and stuff. Well, you're both wrong. Ah, of course not. No, what about not the key fob. Key fob. Drivers appreciate an extra set of eyes on the road, but they're giving the finger, quite literally, to another feature making its way into new vehicles. Those are the findings uh, from J.D. Power, a study measures how effective automakers are in bringing advanced technologies to market in ways that consumers find intuitive and not overbearing like that auto start stop feature. Or the auto braking feature. Well, let's, I've, I've had some people fuss about that. So vehicle owners are most enamored with cameras, according to the okay. company's 2020 U.S. Tech Experience Index. Luxury owners rate such features highest in five of the six satisfaction attributes I see measured that. in the study. Easily. Yeah. Among yeah. advanced camera vision technologies is the, in the mass market segment, camera rear view mirrors receive the highest overall execution score followed by transparent trailer view and ground view camera so you can see sitting in the driver's seat all around the vehicle and especially behind you and i have to tell you i use that rear view backup camera all the time absolutely yeah and john gray at gulf coast auto shield can install <laughs> one on your vehicle if you don't have it uh luxury owners dislike gesture controls. Gesture. And you can only imagine with this hand what you can tell your car. <laughs> and apparently it can now read your hand. I haven't experienced that yet. Well, you know, I'm just... <laughs> Not the gesture. You mean, I haven't experienced the car reading the gesture. You mean as opposed to the guy drive, to just cut you off reading what your gesture was? I, I <laughs> cannot wait for that technology to so understand... It that particular gesture. <laughs> so does and it goes, oh, I'm sorry. The auto start stop feature will now be removed from the vehicle and you won't have to jack with it anymore. <laughs> or it'll be like, Siri, I don't have to take that. I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> and it'll just shut you off and you'll coast over onto the shoulder. So the question is, how would you know that, Mr. Mars? I, now, you so better I, be careful I, because your preacher is listening. <laughs> just say it. And, and your mom is listening. Yeah, mom's watching today. Is she? That's what Conrad said. He's, oh. He saw her up there. Uh, yeah, gesture controls um, uh, it, that let occupants control various interior features using hand gestures. If you can imagine such a thing, instead of touching a knob or a screen. Huh. I won't even go there. Among automakers and their brands, Volvo ranked highest in overall innovation, earning a 617 score out of 1,000 point scale. Well, that's not a whole lot in my book, but no. whatever. BMW, Cadillac, Mercedes-Benz, and Genesis followed in the luxury rankings. Hyundai ranked highest among mass market brands with a score of 556, wow. followed by Subaru, Kia, Nissan, and Ram. 
Uh, the study, which was redesigned for this year, captured responses from 82,500 owners of 2020 model year vehicles surveyed after 90 days of ownership. So it seems like a legit thing. Uh, noting the wide variation in execution strategy across brands, the J.D. Power study found some drivers have positive experiences stemming from lower stress levels while drivers using such systems, uh, while others found them annoying and distracting. And I know about that annoying thing. <laughs> well, one of our uh, listeners online, Brad Hill, uh, he was talking about the the automatic braking when you're in reverse. Yeah. Um, he really thinks that's almost a distraction over anything else. He tends to turn it it's off. It's actually, all the time. it scares me because I'm looking, I see, yeah. I hear, I'm b backing up, I got it all, and then all of a sudden the brakes get slammed on without me touching them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's frightening. And you spill your coffee. I don't usually drink coffee huh. in the car, but that would be something that you would. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I spill my coffee anyhow, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Uh, you know, the In Wheel Time show streams live on Facebook.com slash In Wheel Time, on YouTube, and our website, InWheelTime.com. Podcasts available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Podcast Attic. Quick break now, and then we're going to have a car review, and that review is the Nissan Versa. Got a chance to drive it? I think you'll be interested in what I got to say about it. Stay tuned. Man, I love my kids so much. I once sat for three hours in the cold rain to watch her soccer team lose by 18 goals. I love my kids so much, I once used a tube to suck snot out of her stuffed nose at 3 a.m. You win. Love your kids? Love them enough to make sure they're in the right car seat. From toddlers to tweens, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to find the right seat for their age and size. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. A social distancing tip. While the CDC urges you to avoid close contact, like hugging or shaking hands, there are other non-physical ways to say hello. Wave, wink, use sign language, salute, smile, give the peace sign, throw up an air high five, do jazz hands. Remember, stay a minimum of six feet or two arms length away from others and stay home if you can. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Sorry? Bum, 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 bum. Bump. He's adding his musical talent to it. Along with the sign <laughs> my, language. My, my contribution. The gesture recognition. The gesture recognition. Yeah, because that's really all the I, gestures I just, that I need is just that one. It's the only one you use. Or the you know, only, I don't really use that, that very much anymore. <laughs> I don't use anymore, that anymore. Anymore. Oh, not any less. I think but I not invented anymore. it, didn't, didn't I? Somebody gestured me the other day when I was coming over here. Well, that's, I, uh, yeah. I, I, I've gestured you a couple of times this week, but you why. couldn't see it. Just saying. If I saw you, I'd gesture you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, time now for this. Uh, welcome back to the uh, In Will Time Car Show. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Time now for this hour's car review. Uh, had a chance to drive the 2020 Nissan Versa. It comes in uh, three different trim levels, the S, the SV, and the SR. I had the SR CVT. Uh, the base model of the Nissan Versa actually has an available five-speed manual. And when I give you the price of it, it's going to be the five-speed manual. A five-speed manual is still available. Yeah, that's hard to come by now. This is considered a compact sedan, seats five passengers. Now, this one that you're looking at there, that's the gussied up one, and it looks pretty darn good if you ask me. Exterior changes from last model year, well, it's all new for 2020, and it looks good. Uh, exterior features, longer, lower, and wider in every way. Looks a lot like the Altima, to be honest with you. Uh, and actually has a modern aero front fascia that looks really good, not overpowering the front end, I think. Our tester had a trunk lid mounted spoiler. What I liked about it overall, uh, the overall look competes with the best in class mm. and wins, I think. The, tell me. Yeah, no, it's a good looking car. I, I think it is, too. For a compact, and when I tell you entry the level compact, when I tell you the price, you're going to go what? What could use improvement? Nothing in my estimation. Interior: the highlights include great modern design elements with available contrasting colors, and that 
particular picture right there shows you the contrasting colors. Mine didn't have that, but if that's what you like. But you really like the interior. I, I remember did. when you had it for that price point, you yes, loved the interior. Easy to use infotainment system. Uh, it actually had some back seat leg room. Now, remember, this is a compact, and that can be tight back there. Yeah, you do have to move up the front passenger seat and the driver's seat to let the persons behind you get some leg room. But that's the, it's a compact. It is. It okay. It is compact. So keep that in mind. Also, the trunk. It's got more room than you would think, uh, but it is a small car. What I liked about it? I liked pretty much all of it. What could use improvement? Uh, would have liked a more adjustable lumbar. I had to find something to fill in the blank, and that's what I came up with. Now, as far as engines are concerned, well, it comes with a 1.6 liter inline four-cylinder, naturally aspirated, mm -hmm. no turbo, 122 horsepower. You might not think that's very much. Well, it's not. Torque, only 114 pound-feet. But it has a CVT transmission, and that's how they get by with that little bit of a horsepower. Because it keeps it right in the torque peak as the CVT All the time. Yeah. accelerates. And here's the bonus for that. Miles per gallon in the city, 32. Miles per gallon on the highway, 40. Wow. For a combined of 35, I got 37.9 miles per gallon over 305.5 miles. That's, what I liked that's about, pretty awesome. What I liked about it? Hello, gas <laughs> mileage. Exactly. And I like the look of it. I really like this car. Uh, ride and handling. Great, compliant ride. It is not a sports car. doesn't pretend to be a sports car. So if that's what you're looking for, then you don't want this car. You want a sports car. This is an all-around cool little sedan at the entry level. What could use improvement on the handling? Nothing. It's an all-purpose road car for all. You want a commuter car. You drive a lot. You grow, go from Sugar Land to downtown Houston, or you go from Sugar Land to Hobby Airport, 30 miles a day one way. Hey, maybe this is for you, because it'll certainly do 75, 80 miles an hour like the rest of the South Sam Houston. So you keep, you're not going to get run over necessarily. And you're not going to have range anxiety <laughs> from an electric car. Don't even start with me. <laughs> base trim price. Base trim price. Fourteen thousand eight hundred and thirty dollars. What? <laughs> but get this. That is about two thousand dollars more than last year's model. But it's longer, lower, wider, prettier, prettier. It's got more that. going for it. The standard uh, content of the car has upped the ante. So you get a lot more car for the money. But it's still. $14,830. $14, Price is tested $21,490, but I got the loaded up one. Base model price, model price, remember I had the $18,240. So for under $20,000, sticker, and you know you can get a little wiggle room in that, uh, you can get yourself a pretty decent car. So you're looking for a college car for a kid? Great car. Yeah. So in comparison, it's competitors, Toyota Yaris. 15650 Hyundai Accent 15295 and those are wow. really the only two competitors there aren't any more See and I'm surprised Hyundai is that much pricier at that point because generally Hyundai was always underpricing everybody so that's that's pretty amazing that uh, Nissan brought that price down that low Well I thought it was a pretty good car so take that. Well, I, I remember you bragging about how much you love the interior in that thing. I did because it worked well. It was, it, it was cloth. <laughs> it was cloth. Yeah, he likes cloth. I do like cloth but, interiors. Now, but the one you had had the CVT. But didn't you say you could get a manual? Yes, five yeah, get speed a five-speed five manual is the base, base, base model. That's price. the fourteen eight car. I'll take okay. that. I'll take that. Yeah, because to be honest with you, I, I think that it. personally, I would rather. I would rather have the manual than the CVT, but that's just me. That's my driving style. Right. I want to and shift. Particularly gears. with the way you drive it out on the highway, because you don't actually <clears throat> shift have to do that much. I mean, you go through the gears to get where you're going, but it's not like it's constant. Yeah. So. I guess Interesting. That, I guess that's all. Cool. I like Did it. Did you like it? I yeah, turned. I turned well, yeah, and and I'm thinking, you know. 
I had a granddaughter that just ended up with a car and, and uh, should have bought this. Spend quite that much, but I'm thinking, man, you know, maybe with the financing and stuff. Well, you got to look at a lot of times option. new car financing is a better deal than used car well, financing. That's what I'm saying. Yep. And if you kind of get close in price, you can probably get lower in payment by using new car financing. And, and the warranty, by the time you figure in a warranty. And the wheel and deal. And she's and, gone you know, off right. several hundred miles away to school, so take it to the dealer. Don't worry about finding somebody right. to fix it. Absolutely. Lots of things. So why don't you trade it in and get her get her a new one? Well, I'm going to mention that. <laughs> you mention that to somebody. Mention that to her be, parents, but it not going to be yeah. you. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, the In Wheel Time Car Show, and coming up next, we're going to have a look at the car calendar and the race car. Stay uh, race card. Stay with us. Nine one one. What's your emergency? God, there's a train that just hit a car. Sir, what is your location? Uh, uh, Look uh, around for a street sign, sir. It's 8th and Orchard. 8th and Orchard. Okay, very good. 8th and Orchard. Sir, help is on the way. Why, why would he do that? What, the train still doesn't stop. You have to get there now. At a railway crossing, even if the engineer sees you and hits the brakes, it can take a mile for the train to stop. And for you, that's too late. Stop. Trains can't. Paid for by NHTSA. It's in real time, America's most popular car talk show. We are all things automotive. We always take a look at what's going on as far as the car calendar is concerned and the race card. And Conrad always takes care of that for us. Well, car calendar, um, again, the big thing is next weekend, the Advanced Auto Parts Labor Day Classic out at Houston Motorsports Park. We talked to Gina. I think we're going to talk to her again yeah. here shortly about what's coming up. Uh, also on September 7th, the Labor Day Car Show in Alvin at the Garage Bar and Grill, and that is a judged show. Um, they're going to be giving out 30, 35 uh, trophies and stuff, so oh, wow. go show up. It should be a lot of fun, and, and it's a great place in Alvin just as you go uh, south on 35 Bypass. Uh, it's easy to find on the uh, west side of the road. Alvin. <laughs> September 26th, the third annual car and bike show at Lake Church in Montgomery, Texas. Uh, the military and veterans high performance driving events at the Houston Police Academy is October 3rd and it starts at 7 a.m. So that should that could be a lot of fun as well. Um, the keels and wheels. Do we have status on that right now? It's done. It's canceled. Well, until next this year. year, it's canceled. It'll be at the okay. regular date. In 2021. Uh, on October 17th, the April Sound Show and Shine up in Lake Conroe at the April Sound Country Club. Uh, so there's always lots of stuff coming up in the future. Racing um, this uh, weekend is uh, Saturday night is going to be, be the, tonight. Yeah, that'll be tonight at 5 p.m. The, uh, the, uh, there's going to be drag racing out at uh, uh, Baytown. Uh, fri every Friday night, there's drag racing at Houston Motorsports Park. Also on Sundays, there's drag racing at Houston Motorsports Park or the Eighth Mile stuff. Uh, and then test and tune. On, it's test and tune on Sunday. Uh, the area dirt tracks the cotton bowl speedway uh, they're going to have racing tonight at 7 p.m and that's the one in page texas uh, 105 uh, speedway in cleveland they're going to be having racing tonight gulf coast speedway is off this weekend and the texana speedway in edna is going to be off this weekend gateway uh indy cars is tonight at uh, uh what's gateway gateway is st louis oh Formula One Belgian Grand Prix is tomorrow. Uh, Daytona is tonight. They're doing the night race at Daytona for NASCAR. So that'll be under the Are lights. Are they going to use the road course? Or the no, no, no. It's going to be the, the round, the, the two and a half mile round course. So in other words, I can go to sleep extra early until the very last oh, couple of le leg, uh, legs of the race. And, then... and watch the replays. <laughs> yeah. Uh, IMSA is back on the 4th at Road Atlanta. NHRA is going to be, of course, Labor Day weekend is the big go uh, at Indianapolis. And uh, we're going to be cheering our friend of the show, uh, Erica Enders, as well. Thank you, sir. Hey, uh, if you're a member of a car, truck, or Jeep club, you can put your group in our In Wheel Time Car Club Spotlight. Just email us the club's information and contact name and number, and we'll take it from there. The email address is info at inwheeltime.com. We're back with Gina Child Knowles and how a short track race actually comes together from a promoter stand. You know, she kind of orchestrates that whole thing. 
who's going to race when and where, and how t- what time the gates open, what time everybody has to get there. All of the- she's you know, the it, dance coordinator. Well, and, and she's good. the cat herder. I mean. <laughs> I That's, think she would go for dance coordinator. Well, okay. I don't know if Jean is a cat lady or not, but I'll we'll go with the dance coordinator. She's, Dancing with the with the child. She's coming up next.